Good good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz with the latest roundup of sports today. Let's take a look at what we're discussing. First of all, the ICC ODI Cricket World Cup is just around the corner now. About 15 days remaining until the mega event that kicks off in India. It is the Men's ODI World Cup for the year 2023. And the latest update is that the official anthem of this ICC ODI World Cup 2023 to be played in India has been released. The anthem is titled Dil Jashan Bole and it has been released. The music has been given by Preetham and there are a variety of singers that are participating in this as well, uh, including a rap performance in there as well. So obviously there are going to be mixed opinions, but the fact is that uh, an anthem is always special as far as the World Cup is concerned and it has been released about with 15 days to go until the mega event kicks off in India. So uh, like I said, the fervor is still there. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see all of the hype that is there as well. Then, of course, we move on to some more updates from around the world. Uh, you know, we at Sports Extra do try to give you the latest of updates from the world of sports. So we've got to talk about the Asian Games where Pakistan is on a roll. Pakistan's volleyball team today won their second consecutive match against Chinese Taipei in straight sets. They beat them 3-0. Uh, yesterday, they won their first match and today they won their second one. So they're on a roll. And apart from that, there are various other uh, aspects as well or disciplines in the world of sports that Pakistan is going to be competing in as well. Like, for example, the very first time a Pumze team is going to be participating in this uh, Asian Games. And then, of course, Pakistan men and women's cricket team is also participating separately in the cricket division of these Asian Games as well. So a lot of gold up for grabs. Let's see what Pakistan can pull off. Uh, obviously, we're hoping for the best. Then we move on to Pakistan's World Cup squad. That is still awaited. I'll tell you why it is uh, the delay is happening. But uh, before that, there are some probables which include Hassan Ali, which include Abrar Ahmed to make it to the squad, which include Saud Shakil. There are many names that can be part <coughs> of this World Cup squad, but only time will tell. Uh, why is there a delay? I will let you know uh, as, as the show progresses as well. So that's what we're discussing in detail on the show. And obviously, we're going to stick our focus to the World Cup. Like I said, that the official anthem has been released. It's called Dil Jashan Bol. It's a festivity whenever there's a World Cup. And I mean, if you look at the duration of this World Cup, it starts in the first week of October and goes all the way till the 19th of November. All teams playing against each other. Nine matches each for each team is going to be an action-packed event. And then, of course, we've got two semifinals and then a final. So we'll discuss all about that time now to introduce our guest first of all in studios we've been joined by cricket expert and analyst Rizwan Haider assalamu alaikum how are you assalamu alaikum Ahmed. great to have you on the show we've also been joined by cricket expert and analyst Sabir Hussain assalamu alaikum how are you wa alaikum assalam Ahmed. I'm fine thank you great to have you as well uh, now as I said that uh, you know the anthem is there as well so we'll talk about that anthem in just a short amount of time I'll, I'll make you listen to that as well if I can so I, I will give you. But before that, I think uh, the big news right now is Pakistan's World Cup squad. Now, sources tell us that the delay is happening due to the final medical report of Naseem Shah. Because Pakistan Cricket Board is still hoping that if he's even 50% fit, they'll try to carry him for the World Cup and play him in the second round if they qualify for the semi-finals, you know, or in the later stages of the game, they'll try to play him. Otherwise, if he's not fit, then obviously we know Hassan Ali's name is being discussed a lot. Uh, but the captain, the chief selector the chairman of the cricket committee, all have finalized things. And I think only time will tell now whatever decision the PCB's medical uh, panel makes. And then uh, after this delay, we'll, we'll know. But I think we're going to be the last team probably to announce that World Cup squad. But Rizwan, if this is true, and if uh, the delay is particularly because of this reason, and if there is a possibility where they want to take a half fitness team, Shah, you know, it's all deja vu as they did to Shine Shah Freedy in that T20 World Cup. Uh, how are things going for Pakistan cricket? Uh, I think this is called far-sightedness you know, of the cricket board that they have already planned that they're going to reach the semi-finals and then if, if need be, then uh, Naseem Shah can come in. But I think that's a terrible thing to do. I mean, you've got nine games to play before reaching the semi-finals. The conditions in India are more suitable to spin bowlers. So uh, because the ball gets old very early, there's hardly any reverse swing. Uh, there's no point, you know, waiting for somebody for the second last or the third last game. You you go with your fittest 15 <coughs> that there is. But the sad thing is because we haven't used anybody in the last one year, other than if somebody was forced out due to injury, we've just been playing around 12 people uh, in the last one and a half year in one day internationals. And that is the reason we, we're not ready. Bangladesh and Sri Lanka are the, are the other two teams whose scores are not finalized, but the reason, but there is a reason for that. The reason is that Bangladesh still has three one internationals to, to play before the World Cup. And uh, I think Sri Lanka also has a couple of one internationals to, to go ahead. 
So they can finalize it up to 28th. That's not the issue. We can also finalize up to the 28th of September. But the point is, we have no idea who's going to be fit, who's going to be playing, because we haven't tested anybody. Whoever comes in will be untested quantity, commodity, untested commodity. And that's the sad thing. I think we should set our expectations right now to a, to a minimum level. I think this team is going to finish around fifth, sixth maximum. And not, uh, they're not going to be contenders for the semi-final. So if that is the case, in my personal opinion, then you should you know, go for your fittest 15. Um, God knows who those are going to be. But then again, the fitness criteria in Pakistan cricket is different for certain individuals. But Sabir, if, if that is the case, um, as Rizwan mentioned, that you know, trying to uh, presume that you're going to make it to the semi-finals and then immediately drop him into a pressure game, uh, what is the idea behind all of this? Uh, it will not be a wise decision, you know, to be very honest. I mean, let, let, let's talk about, you know, something uh, about the Seam Shah's injury. If, 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 he, if he basically complained, you know, a shoulder injury when he was, you know, playing group matches in Pakistan, I mean, so, I mean, how he can be fit, I mean, in 15 days, I mean, and you cannot pick up the baller for this, for the, for the major event, I mean, half fit baller, you know, and he, he, he must be traveling with the team at, in the, into the traveling reserves as well. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not an opinion, to, to be very honest. I mean, if, if someone is, you know, complaining for, for so many days, I mean, better to give him a rest and so better to include someone else, I mean, rather than, you know, delaying your squad, I mean, better to score, better to announce your squad because it's, it's, you need to regroup very, very quickly. Only, you know, uh, 8 to 10 days remaining, you have to play some warm up matches as well against Australia, against New Zealand as well. So, I mean, it will be, you know, a difficult time for, for the players, I mean. There are a couple of players, I mean, who are basically ex expected to be in the squad, I mean, but there are some rumors as, as well, I mean, about Hassan Ali, you know, Abrar Ahmad as well. I would like to see Abrar, I mean, you know, to be very honest, because he's a mystery baller, he's a youngster, you know, he has some, some variety, not like, not like Shadav Khan, you know. Though he has played some, some couple of domestic matches as well, he has an experience of, you know, playing domestic cricket and test cricket as well. But, but I mean, uh, I would prefer, you know, Ibrar Ahmed instead of Shadab Khan, but he, Shadab Khan cannot be, you know, uh, dropped because of his vice captaincy. So, I mean, uh, Hassan Ali has a big, big question mark as far as his fitness is concerned, his bowling pace is concerned, though he has been bowling wonderfully well and in county, county championship and, um, but I mean, his, his, his past record, you know, in the Pakistan team in ODIs and T20s uh, is, is, is not good, I mean, to be very honest. But I mean, he, if, he, if he is included in the squad instead of, you know, uh, in place of a replacement of uh, Naseem Shah, so it will be very, uh, you know, wonderful oppor opportunity for Hassan Ali. Being a senior player, he, he basically needs to perform because we, we, he basically, you know, uh, dropped the catch into the semi-final against Australia. So he basically needs to perform really well, you know, to, 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 I was to remove all the, you know, uh, big bashes uh, against him uh, uh, when, when he dropped the catch. I mean, but being a senior bowler, he needs to perform along with Shine Shafri and, and Harsh Shroff as well. Though, I mean, all players cannot play all uh, complete nine matches. You need to rest a couple of bowlers, a couple of batsmen as well. Sao Shakil could be very handy, could be handy, could be handy in the middle order as well, because Pakistan basically always struggle uh, in, the, in the middle overs. I mean, if Babar Azam, you know, goes, Imam Ulaki as well, then it's really difficult for Rizwan to perform. Iftikhar cannot give you, you know, uh, big innings I mean, uh, all the time. Salman Ali Aga, you know, he's, an, he's a newcomer in the, in the ODIs. He might struggle. So you need to have a solid technical batsman, which is Sao Shakil. Absolutely. Uh, but the fact of the matter still remains that, you know, we're directionless, Rizwan, I think, if, if it is the right terminology, that we're still trying to, you know, uh, have sheer luck on our side rather than a thorough plan or uh, I think we're, we're already a nation who's never planned anything at all as far as cricket is concerned. Because as, as I keep on saying that, why is it every time there's a World Cup here, the PCB management is in all sorts of trouble and they still are. There, there's still something going on between the PCB cricket committee and the government. Uh, then again, on the second note, you've got problems within the uh, team management that is there, the captaincy, the form of the players, the selection problems, everything, is, you know, is, uh, it's fate probably that injuries also come in between whenever there's a World Cup here. Well, uh, let's get straight to the point. First of all, we have to realize we finished fourth in Asia Cup. Mm. If you look at the table, we were fourth. Mm. So expecting to make it to the semi-finals when England is going to be there, South Africa is going to be there, Australia is going to be there, uh, New Zealand is going to be there, it's, you know, that's thinking far ahead. Number two, there's a constitution in place for PCP. Why don't we implement it? Why doesn't any government, this is a, a caretaker government, they can implement that. If the constitution of PCB, which is not the same constitution as the, you know, the government is in place and it's properly used, then we, we get rid of all the political uh, turmoil, mm. uh, you know, the boards, the local regions come in, come in play, and then you can have a proper board which can manage for three years or four years or, or whatever the term is. If that is put in place, first class structure is given importance, then you take out of that. 
uh, then you know at least one of the thing is uh, settled political issues are solved number 2 we have to make sure that india you know example of india is that ipl is only uh, their players play ipl mm. they are not allowed to go anywhere else you know they are rested uh, if you look at australia Cummins didn't play against South Africa. Uh, Stark Mitchell didn't play against South Africa. If you look at England, they've been rotating all around. Even India, uh, if you see their uh, last game, uh, they were resting players in the game versus mm. Sri Lanka, which they lost. Even they against about Australia, five players. first two matches, Kohli and Sharma aren't playing, and Rahul is captaining the side. Yes, exactly. They've had Bumrah being mm. uh, captaining the side. They've had Pandya captaining mm. the side. And Rohit Sharma has been resting. Rohit uh, Virat Kohli has been resting. KL Rahul came back from injury and then settled in. And because of that uh, resting, they've got replacements in place. They've got Shireyas Ayer. They've got Ishan Kishan, they've got Shubhan Gill. You know, that's how people come into play. You've got Siraj coming in uh, when Shami's been resting. But Rizwan, can it be entirely uh, said that the board has that uh, domain to control that? Or, the but board? it has to be the individual players themselves to cons have that far-sightedness that, you know, we, we want to preserve ourselves for a World Cup. When it, when it comes to yeah, just making money, I think as a player, I would want to play all the games. Mm. Saber would want to play all the games because mm. Uh, whenever you you play, you get fame, you get money. There are monetary benefits. If you're in the side, then people get to see you play. They know you. You're recognized the world over. And nobody wants to retire in this uh, in this world. If you ask anybody, uh, you know, even Steve Wop, did he want to retire? I'm sure he saw, he thought that his body could take another year, uh, or or one more year after that. Shane Warne, Glenn McGrath, the boards have to be strong. That's the reason Australia has won five World Cups because they're very very clear on when somebody needs to retire. They make sure that Steve Waugh, this is your last series, go ahead, play, give it your best shot, Sydney Test, you're retiring. Mm -hmm. Shane Warne, Glenn McGrath, whoever. And that's the reason Australia has been world number one. They won 16, 17 consecutive test matches. They've been uh, number one in the, in this, in the world for mm -hmm. about seven, eight, ten years Absolutely. consistently. Mm -hmm. we, we lack that. <coughs> India also lacks that. But Indian board has shown a, a lot of strength in the, in, the, in the recent years. And that's the reason that they've beaten Australia in Australia in test series twice now. We haven't even won a test match in Australia since 1996, 1994. I don't remember. Mm. It was, it's been so long. <laughs> so that's the problem. The board has to be strong. And when the board is strong, then the player power, you know, uh, dissolves a bit. I mean, so much talk, uh, Sabir. I think just about two, three months ago, we were talking about the fact that Pakistan now has a fantastic bench strength. There is a player to replace every player, and that creates competitiveness amongst the side. But then again, the team captain and the board and the management fail to understand the importance of managing that workload. Absolutely, you know, I mean, uh, most of the, you know, coaching staff is to blame. Uh, obviously, the board members as well. I mean, look, I mean, we cannot compare Pakistan PCB with other cricketing, to be, to be very honest, I mean. I be, we cannot compare PCB with BCCI or England Cricket Board or Australian Cricket Board as well. They, they have, a, you know, some kind of SOPs as well, to how to handling the players, I mean, how to give them the respect. I mean, you're talking about the fair, farewell to Shane Wong, to Glenn McGraw, <laughs> I mean, Look at the Pakistani players. I mean, they basically do not want to retire. I mean, at the age of 39, 40 years, uh, 40 years. I mean, even then, uh, they have been not performing really well. I mean, mm -hmm. for a couple of test matches. I mean, so in in Pakistan cricket, they have been forced to retire. To be very you know, I mean, Shoaib Khan just recently took retirement. <laughs> so he and was and let, still let, of the opinion. Let, let, let me just chip in. Shoaib Malik is still available for the <laughs> World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, a couple of you know, uh, uh, the uh, recently some, some ministers in, in, in Punjab as well. He basically recently mm -hmm. you know uh, retired. I mean, you can say Wahab Riaz. Yes, you can say <laughs> I don't want to take take, take his name, but I mean, uh, but you know, there are some uh, couple of you know uh, issues in Pakistani management. I mean, to handling the players. I mean, and it's a prime responsibility of player as well. He himself basically has to blame he because he has to uh, you know uh, request to you know to the team management that he is having uh, you know some kind of issues, some niggles as well. Better to rest him. But I mean, uh, what about some other senior players like Babar Azam, you know, Shadab Khan, Shahin Shah Afridi as well. Um, and they, they basically should not play, should not have played against Nepal. They should not have played against Netherlands, against Ireland, you know, against, against Zimbabwe as well. But I mean, look at some other teams. I mean, uh, like Indian cricket, uh, cricket team, Australian as well. You know, like uh, Rizwan Bhai rightly said. I mean, a couple of senior players are basically are being rested against South Africa, though they have lost the ODI series. You know, by, by the margin of 100, 100 runs in consecutive three ODIs, but. They basically rested because their prime responsibility is to play the World Cup for the uh, for the for, for their nation and to win the World Cup. That's why mighty Australians they they they, uh, they always perform really well in the in the major major events. I mean, but we basically we we always try to play our uh, full strength team. 
We do not try to bench strength is kind of a name but basically to, for the management. They do not want to, you know, uh, try some new players. Though they have included Kamran Ghulam on the basis of superb performance in the domestic circuit, but he didn't get a single chance. Uh, Kiasif always, says, you know, says about Kamran Ghulam. So I mean, he is absolutely right. I mean, but Kamran Ghulam didn't get a chance. You know, Usman Salauddin, Asad Shafiq has been performing wonderfully well. Sarfaraz Ahmed. So sometimes they they have to make changes on the on the pressure of social media. I would say. But from, from their, their, their intentions are not basically right. I mean, so better to, you know, uh, try to uh, give them the chances to the bench strength. Mohamed Wasim Jr., he's a, he's a fantastic baller. He, he, he balled wonderfully well in West Indies and New Zealand as well, you know, and in Asia Cup as well. So why don't you, you know, play him rather than playing uh, Naseem Shah all the matches? I mean, Naseem Shah played against humid conditions. Uh, no, not to blame LPL, London Premier League, he basically played all the matches against Afghanistan, you know, against Nepal, against Bangladesh, and traveling as well, fatigue as well. So they, they are basically human beings, and a guy at the, at the age of 20 years old, being injured again, second or third time, it's very harsh, I think. I, I, I've got news, right? I, I, I was just, just you know, going to say this on the show, I just showed it to Rizwan as well, Sabri can chip in as well. So Dominic Cork is saying, India look a complete package in the World Cup, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, Pakistan look discombobulated, which means uh, humorous, confused, and disorientated. Rizwan, so that is what Dominic Cork has said. I understand where people are naming Pakistan in the top four. This is a statement that really, you know, makes headway into this. And before seeing that, I, I did tell yes, you that yes. Pakistan is <laughs> going to finish fifth, sixth, <laughs> or seventh. I think fifth would be very kind to them, sixth or seventh. I think they're right. If you look at the Indian squad, at least they have a squad. You know, they've already announced it. It's a complete squad. You look at the batting, they have options. If Rahul is, is not uh, playing at four, he can also open the batting at uh, number one or two. Rohit Sharma and Shubham <coughs> are opening. Ishan Kishan can uh, come in and open the innings as well. And Ishan Kishan has performed at number five and six. Uh, so has, uh, I mean, can you imagine Surya Kumar Yadav be, ha, is not part of the one day team. He's in the mm. squad, but he hasn't, he's just been given one game. But, but, but I've got an update and I want you to comment on this scenario as a player. I mean, we need to discuss, we've never discussed the mental approach of, of the Pakistani players and the Indian players or a fine line that needs to be drawn. Because I think automatically there's one for us, the closest indicator to rate a player is that we start comparing them to Indian players. Let's be honest. So Surya Kumar Yadav was asked in, a, in, in an interview that the World Cup's coming up. What are your expectations? You've not been part of the side. You're sitting on the bench. And he himself said this to his interviewer that I'm still trying to develop my one day game. I'm scoring well in T20, but I've not, you know, transformed myself. That conversion hasn't happened for me for, for, for the one day dynamics. And I'm still trying to learn a lot of that on the bench and working with the coaches. Until I feel I'm ready, I will not be part of that one day squad. I will let the coaches know when I'm ready. So that statement on one side and then what we consider we're doing is, is a big conundrum in the world. I think that he's absolutely spot on. One day cricket is completely different to T20 cricket. T20 cricket you get decent batting wickets, flat wickets and it's just 20 overs, 120 balls maximum you're going to face is about 50 to 60 if you're opening the batting. Coming at number 4 or 5 you get 20, 25, 30 balls and you know you just need to go and hit out. The uh, fielding conditions are different, the fielding rules are different. In 50 over game, you need to develop your game. You need to play, you need to have the intention of staying at the wicket, let the runs come, settle in. And you know, if, if, uh, if you lose 30 for three and then you come in, then you have a different perspective on the game. Uh, in T20 cricket, if it's 30 for three, you still need to go, you know, bam, 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 uh, and start hitting out. Because there's just 20 overs, you, you can't afford to stay at the wicket and you know, think about conditions and stuff. And Surya Kumar Yadav is absolutely correct. The development of a player, needs to be from list A. He can't come in from T20 cricket into, into international cricket. Mm -hmm. Imagine if Surya Kumar Yadav had come into burst onto the PSL and then the Pakistan, PS, uh, Pakistan T20 team. We would have been begging him to bat at number four in one day international. And test cricket. <laughs> and test cricket as well. So that's, that's where the differentiation comes from mm -hmm. the Indian cricket board, that they have defined it. They've made it clear to the players what exactly are your, uh, you're capable of. And until and unless you, these are the benchmarks that you have to you know, uh, uh, get yourself accommodated to and perform at a certain level, and then you will be considered for list taking. And I think, uh, as an added perspective, we would have also asked Yadav if he can bowl as well. So <laughs> we, we, we would have done that as well. But Sabir, it's very important to get this perspective. You're, you're in on this argument as well, you know, the approach of Surya Kumar Yadav or any other Indian cricketer for that fact. I mean, even look at Shubman Gill. The transformation from, from, from IPL to a one-day player has been phenomenal. 
he's still uh, you know uh, one of the top prospects for the world cup as far as india is concerned as you know uh, surya kumar yadav is a prime example i mean if, if you compare with our pakistani players i mean you know it, you have to be sincere with yourself if you know if you're not you're not performing uh, well for a couple of matches you know for a couple of series better to tell yourself you know then go to domestic circuit and play you know four day matches you know better to you know test yourself try to, to new, uh, learn some new skills as well try to go to some some senior players like coaches as well ya yasir shah used to have some issues he basically you know he, he went to uh, mushtaq ahmed well shadab khan is facing so much you know problems as far as his bowling is concerned because his prime responsibility is, is to you know bowl well not not bat, not bat well and contribute something 10 to 15 runs i mean he's he's a basically bowling all rounder same same goes for fai mashraf i mean if if, if he's not picking up the wickets I mean, but he's saving couple of runs you know and and may making 20 to 15 runs with with the bat as well so it is for no use as far as for team is team is concerned i mean mm -hmm. shadab khan he he basically has he has to you know a good domestic circuit like like other players as well you know but sabri if i was to ask you that if not for him mashraf then who because you know it is a real fact that in pakistan we have not worked on a quality spinner and we have not looked to develop a quality all rounder into the side i mean when was the last all rounder that we could see in the team uh, a fast bowling all rounder after abdul razak we never tried rana navidul hasan we tried Sorry, you sir. know <laughs> I, I, i i buy your argument now <laughs> we basically tried you know couple of uh, uh, you know all round fast bowler uh, anwar ali bilawal bhatti as well you know hamad azam as well for, uh, for pakistan he played for pakistan as well but but they they played couple of matches for pakistan they could have been you know lethal in in, in the in the, you know, in the odi as well they have been wonderfully you know well performed uh, uh, they performed wonderfully mm -hmm. in south africa as well i still remember the match against you know south africa we won the series by the way in 2013 under the captaincy of miss paul luck anwar, anwar ali bilawal bhatti as well they basically were, were super Uh, you know bowlers as well they bowl wonderfully well and then to they played one of the most limited number of games in their career ever i mean i can go on and on bilawal bhatti anwar ali amir yamin amad but and now now in the recent example is that of amir jamal amir. who could be that prime candidate to be developed and because we raised this argument of of first class domestic experience amir jamal has that yes. and he's the one who's been in recent form but we've not considered him i think for teams all around the world it's always about that x factor player and we never focus on that So I think that will always be something that we need to improve on. We'll go towards a short break. When we come back, we'll continue the discussion. Stay tuned to Sports Extra. that cricketing showdown in Asia is back the most anticipated clash of the event is here the big guns from Asia are here to compete for the glory this is the Asia Cup the tournament that will have you on the edge of your seats Don't miss it. Welcome back to Sports Extra. Now we discuss some of the probables of this Pakistan squad that might make it. And just for the record, if you talk about this Indian team, they are also planning to include Ravi Chandra Ashwin in place of Shreyas Iyer, who is out with a back injury. And Rohit Sharma did mention that he is in talks with Ravi Chandra Ashwin to probably make it to the side. So that is going to be a big plus point for India to include yet another quality spinner. When I say quality spinner, I mean experience and talent both at the same time. So Rizwan, where teams are looking to add to their strength. 
Uh, like I said, we're still not sure because rumor has it that maybe Abrar Ahmed is going to be included into the side. Usama Mir's future is still not sure. Shadab Khan, automatic choice for us. Well, first of all, if Shriya's year is being, uh, you know, going out because of injury and somebody like Ashwin is coming in, that just shows that to India, the strength of the t squad is so deep that even if a batsman goes out, they can afford to bring in another spinner. And I think uh, the reason for that would be the, the way Pakistan and the other teams played approached spin bowling in the, in the, World Cup, in the Asia Cup. And uh, targeting New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, England against spin would probably be the key for India. So that's why they're adding another spinner. And we could see probably three spinners playing in the same game instead of Akshar, Akshar Patel. Uh, and what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes. So the question was that you know the the approach. We are not still not sure. We're still okay. not sure because the rumor has it Abrar Ahmed is going to make it to the side. Usama Mir is uncertain. Shadab Khan is the automatic choice. I want to focus particularly on the spin aspect because, as you mentioned, we're going to get a lot of spin tracks in. I it. think the cupboard is bare. Hmm. It's very very bare. There's no competition. There's no. Uh, options. Even if you look at Abra's bowling in the test match, in the first match he was very successful, but after that, that he got found out because he doesn't tweak the ball that much, he doesn't give it that much air, he's quick through the air, and there's a very little variation. So uh, we may think that he can be a success for us in the World Cup, but I doubt that if he's going to be a replacement. But the other problem is we don't have options. I would have loved Osama Mir to be in the squad because he at least spins the ball a bit more. Mm -hmm. Nawaz, I know he hasn't been very, very successful, but he still tweaks, the, gives it a bit of a, a rip and uh, spins the ball. But uh, it's just so sad that for a nation which plays on wickets that are as uh, slow as Pakistan and the subcontinent, we haven't got any options. But we've had the domestic experiences, one. Let's talk about a couple of names. Uh, Osama Mir is one of them as a leg spinner, left arm spinner, Imaz Basim already played for Pakistan, so I won't include him in this argument. Zafar Gohar is a name who had fantastic domestic numbers, wasn't included. If you wanted an X factor, you could have gone with Sufyan Mukim, who still doesn't have that much of domestic experience, but performed well in under-19. If we're just looking towards something, you know, of, of new age. But if you look at the past history, Imad Basim played and then ignored Osama Mir, almost same case, Abrar Ahmed. Sajid Khan, nowhere to be seen. I don't know where he is. Uh, Noman Anwar for test, uh, Zahid, was, uh, Zahid Mahmood was one of our uh, primary spinners who was being played across formats for Pakistan. Immediately, one fine day, they decide <coughs> that you know he's not going to be good enough for the Pakistan. But if you look at Zahid's figures, his bowling average was uh, in first class cricket was about 35, 36 mm -hmm. plus. So that's not really good figures. Similarly, uh, Sufyan Mukim, yes, maybe an option. Uh, but other than that, Abra doesn't spin the ball that much. Iwa Imad Masim that you were mentioning is pretty good in T20 mm. because he opens the bowling and you know slides the ball in. But other than that, for 10 overs, I don't think he's the right bowler for you. But do you buy, you know, one question, then I move to Sabah. Do you buy the argument where the skipper right now has made a statement where he says that Imad Masim is right now our best bowler? The audience is probably not accepting the fact because he's not taking wickets. But he is still bowling the best to his ability. Is that what Babar Azam said? That's yes, that's what he said. So now th this is a conundrum. Your best bowler is bowling the best overs of his life, but not taking wickets. And the best bowler, if the skipper says so, has not been part of the squad for the last six months, then who's to be blamed? <laughs> you know, that's the biggest question. If Babar Azam thinks that Imad Vaseem is your best player, no, no Shadab Khan. Shadab Khan. Shadab. Shadab. No, I, I, I think Shadab is not a twen, uh, ten over bowler. He's he's very effective in the T20 format, but. I haven't seen anything from the last uh, three, four years from him in the 10 over game or the test matches that mm -hmm. I think that uh, there's anything to be you know, expecting Absolutely. a lot from him. Sabir, uh, definition of a good bowler now, if he's not taking wickets, he's still a good bowler. So <laughs> I understand it's the right argument if he bowls 10 overs economically well. For 35 uh, runs. I understand. But if the Lankans are taking him across the park with their cross hits and Rohit Sharma is doing the same, I don't know what's happening. No, I mean, in the press conference, you know, Babar Azam, he was, con he was basically himself was conf confused because mm. Shadab Khan picked up four wickets against Nepal in the first match, I mean. So, might be he was saying that he's, he's in good nick, but he's not picking up the wickets. Wickets might be not picking up against India, might be against Sri Lanka. So, he was a bit confused, you know, uh, he, he's in good form because he, he picked up a couple of wickets against Nepal, but he's not bowling well, bowling not well against India and Sri Lanka. So, no, to be very honest, I, I really I totally agree with the Rizwan by that, that yes, he's not a 10 over, a 10 over bowler because he, he has to, you know, play test matches, you know, four day cricket as well, county cricket as well, then he'll, he'll be able to become a proper, genuine, uh, you know, a ODI bowler like Usama Mir. Usama Mir, we, you know, to be very honest, we are basically, you know, 
uh, damaging his career. Like, like we have, you know, already damaged careers of Sajid Khan, you know, to be very honest, uh, Bilal Asif as well, as well in test matches, you know. Now we are, you know, uh, playing, uh, you know, a couple of uh, some, some bad games against youngsters like you know, Abrar Ahmed as well. So, you know, you have to basically work with them properly. Better to, you know, if, you, if the, he is in your, in, in, your, in your plan, so better to, you know, utilize him properly in the domestic circuit, in NCA as well. Better to, you know, uh, g give them a couple of coaches as well because you know the importance of World Cup because you, you knew a couple of, you know, years ago you will be, you have to play in the world, you have to play, you know, World Cup in India, you have to play Asia Cup in, in Pakistan or Sri Lanka. So you, you basically need to develop, you have to have a plan, you know, for the spinners, I mean. But we basically, we, we always focus on Shadab Khan and Mokhan I think Nawaz. it's your responsibility, Sabir, to find us a mystery spinner from Ladkana now because I don't know where spinners are in Pakistan. Anymore. I used to bowl by the way leg spinner but <laughs> when I left. What do you mean you used to bowl? You can still bowl I'm sure. No, no, when we get a team together, we can have you as a leg spinner. While Shah, Yasir Shah is performing the test matches in Shadab Khan, so I basically, you know, uh, forgot how, how to bowl leg spin. I mean, <laughs> Imagine so I mean, the condition Pakistan. of Pakistan cricket when Sabir is now making himself <laughs> available for the World Cup. I mean, come on, Pakistan. But, but Rizwan, you are also a quality spinner. I know that. For you know, and so you are, a, you know, if you're all self-praising each other, <laughs> then that's fine. <laughs> no, but, but uh, Sabir, let, let's be honest. Let's... Let's do a catharsis of the past five years on how many spinners have we developed, especially for one-day cricket. Uh, so many. I mean, Z Zahid Mahmood could have been a wonderful choice. You know, he mm. played against Australia, mighty side. We won the series against Australia, though he was, you know, uh, 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 basically went for a couple of runs, but he, pick he picked up the wickets. I mean, I still remember, you know, um, uh, uh, I think uh, David Warner as well, so sorry, uh, Stephen Smith as well, Amanas Lombashe as well, uh, Travis Head as well. So he was basically picking up the wickets in the middle overs. I mean, this is what we want basically for from Osama Mir as well. So Osama Mir, he has been okay against New Zealand, but I don't know what's the reason behind that he has been dropped on, on the basis of one match or two match or a couple of overs as well. Every bowler can 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 you know can go can go for runs. I mean, Adam Zampa basically went for the the buddy of uh, you know Marcus Tonis. I mean, he basically went for more than 100 runs. I mean, against South Africa, but he will never be dropped for by the Australian team. I mean, so Pakistani management needs to needs to you know think the importance of quality bowlers like Usama Mir. I mean, it will be, you know, very bad for him to be dropped in the, you know, in the ODI, I mean, World Cup squad. I believe that even if he's there, there will be, uh, you know, the, the team management will be reluctant to play Usama Mir. And I particularly think that then there becomes a lot of danger to the vice captain as he is, that is Shah Ab Khan, that he might not be able to secure his place in the side. So once again, back to square one, Rizwan, that insecurities take over cricket in Pakistan. And that's the biggest problem. You know, the board has to be strong. I've said that time and again, the board has to decide, the board has to make sure the players are in line. Uh, we're paying them what they want. Uh, they're allowed to go and play each and every league, wherever they please. Indian board has control. They don't let their players go. Other than county cricket, they just play IPL, uh, IPL it is. And uh, that's right. Well, there you have it. That wraps it up from me and the entire team of Sports Extra. It's goodbye for now.